Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So, today's system is from the user Bulba and Discord, so massive thanks to them for sending their system. And without further ado, let's get straight into this. So their system is called the Crum and Phylum system. So let's go ahead and check it out, should it be on the workshop? There it is. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. Oh, alright, hello. Welcome to the Crumb and Phylum, Phylum system. Let's guide you through this system. Okay, so, we'll leave that for now. Looks like it's a binary. Okay, oh, alright. Oh, I see you. So, Crumb and Phylum. A G-type star much larger than the sun, that's all. And then the other one is a K-type star a bit smaller than the sun. Okie dokie. So, there are both of those guys. Right, first of the objects out, we have got Normia, which is here. There he is, okay. Very, very hot looking, okay. It's a Venusian world, it's the hottest planet in the system, it has an average temperature of 979 degrees Celsius. Another interesting thing about Normia is that it's the most volcanic planet in the system. Okay, let's have a little look underneath. Oh yes, looking pretty, uh, pretty brutal under there. Okay. Moving on to Julum. It's a molten world that has recently suffered from a collision. It has an it has an average or atmosphere too. It's an average temperature of 238 degrees Celsius. It has one moon called Fas, which is here. Looks quite similar to its parent planet as well. Okay. Uh, it's recently formed said collision and has a temporary atmosphere. It also has molten lava oceans. Okay. That's all of this area here. That's pretty cool. Okay. Nice. Now we're moving on to Yaunt, over here. It's the only inner dwarf planet in the system. It's probably a binary system with Helmo. It has an atmosphere of mainly carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and ammonia. It has a, a heart-shaped canyon on its surface. Oh, yeah, check that out. Oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. Ah, okay, so this has a little uh, custom sort of uh, map on it. Pretty nice. Okay. So next up we got Lurko. Guessing that's the Saturn world we viewed when we came in. Yep, there he is. Okay. The first of two gas giants in the system. Lurko is beige and presumably has a red spot about two jillums wide. It has an average temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. Lurko is also the least densest planet in the system. It has a ring system and about 10 moons. Okay. There's its moons. So these all have descriptions as well, I think. So first up we've got Cramil and Bur Burby here. So they're both asteroid moons. They're close minor moons, barely anything interesting about them. Then we've got Valiance, which is here. It's a volcanic moon being tidally locked with Lurko. It has a surface of mainly sulphur. It's the second most volcanic body in the system. Okay. Sedlas. Which is somewhere. Where is it? There it is. It's an icy moon and the smallest moon, major moon. Um, it's geologically active, meaning it has volcanic activity. The cryovolcanism is mostly seen on the dark blue side. Nice. Then we've got Nor P over here. It's a brown minor moon and it's the biggest out of all the minor moons and it's heavily cratered. Other than that, there's nothing interesting. Next up, we've got Stello. Which is here. It's a water world and has an atmosphere mainly water, nitrogen and methane. It has a small magnetic sphere but is still dangerously toxic due to solar radiation since it has a weak ozone layer. Stello is also the second biggest moon in the system. Very nice. There is underneath. So, looking pretty good. Okay. Then we have Helmo over here, even further out. It's an ice world and also the furthest moon of Lurko. Um, and Helmo is most likely a captured dwarf planet. Its binary partner is probably Yaunt. Which I can't see. Okay. Oh, all the way over here. Oh, it's miles away. Oh, okay. So it broke away from that one then. Okay, gotcha. Next up we've got Chrysler. This one? Crylassi, over here. 
It's the furthest rocket planet by far. It is a big crater from an impact event and some craters on its surface. It has an average temperature of minus 65 degrees and has two moons. There's that big impact crater. Probably this area here, I'm guessing, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Nice. Alright, what's next? Uh, I guess it's still on trails. I guess it's these guys here. Oh. Barry centers are so glitchy. Cummy. Where is it? Cummy? Uh, where is it? Catch you. There it is. It's an interesting name. <laughs> so, there it is. Oh, yeah, that one there. Okay, gotcha. So it's a brown uh, asteroid moon, and it's the closest moon. It has a big crater from an impact. Okay. And then Kylum is a brownish white asteroid moon. So where's that one then? Oh, oh, I could barely, I barely even saw those when we initially went by this subject. So there they are. Nice. Right, next up we're heading to Krylito and Kawa. Which I'm guessing is these guys. Oh yes, hello. So, a binary dwarf planet system has many craters on its surface. Its biggest crater was from a major impact event. Uh, and then the other one has a snow patch on its north pole is mostly dark brown. So they both are there. Very nice. Next up we've got Skylar. Where's that? There he is. Very dark trails a lot of these. We've got some two little ring systems. Look at that. Pretty cool. Is there a dark brown dwarf planet? It has a red spot on its surface and two rings. How they formed is unknown. Next up we're heading to Gralado. Gralado. Over here. It's a beige tannish dwarf planet. Nothing interesting about this dwarf planet. It has about two moons. Okay. You can see them here. Hillian Norish. There's Hillian. It is a brown moon. Its terrain is rough. Other than that, there's nothing here about it. And Norish here. It's somehow greenish. We have no idea how this happened. Something interesting about it. Next up, we've got Colombo. Colombo. Over here. It's the second of the two gas giants, and Colombo is light blue. It is the biggest planet in the system. It's so big, in fact, it can fit every object in the system three times. It also has a ring system about 12 moons and 92 sub moons. It's pretty big. So, okay. Mass wise, uh, that's not actually that big actually. There you go, only 0 0.65 Jupiters. There's all its moons. So, brown low albedo moons, that's about all of them. We're not going to zoom in on all of them. Get them up on the menu instead. They're all very similar. So, the first three low albedo, other than that, nothing interesting. Uh, Mirando is a small major moon. It's mostly grey in colour, it has the biggest canyon. Then we got Day Jar. It's an ice world around Colombo and is geologically active around its southern pole. Its surface is predominantly covered in ice and has a thin atmosphere made of water vapour. Oh, the trail's very dark. It's hard with the background to spot some of these for me. Um, it's a brown moon around Colombo. It has ice on its surface and is multiple basins and likely from impacts. Uh, Elven over here. Also a brown moon around Colombo, has high mountains on it and the highest mountains of anybody in the system. It's also the biggest moon in the system. Okay. Then we got Chapero. Over here. They're all very they're all the same they're all really, really similar. Big crater on it, asteroid, okay. Celado. Beige moon around Colombo and it's heavily created by asteroids and it's the most cratered moon. We've got even further ones out here. So, Skihirims, Nullo, and Kalam. They are the outer moons of all captured dwarf planets. Uh, icy asteroids, most likely a captured comet. Nothing. So, there's a lot of nothing interesting about sitting there. <laughs> so, there they all are. Um, and lastly, is that anything further out? But they're in orbit of this as well. I can't even find the last two. I can't even spot them. B E R. Where, where are they? 
Ah, so they were hidden here. Okay. They all were uh, more natural looking things. No fancy colours in this system. So there's all the objects there. And that wraps up the guide. See you soon. Okie dokie. So that is it for this system. So there's our lineup. Quite a realistic bunch, really. You know, not really anything like out of this world colours and stuff like that. You know, it is quite down. So, you know, down to reality, you know, more of a realistic feel to it, which I don't mind, actually. I quite like it, you know. it's Not every system has to be all fancy funky. You know, this one's got more realistic colour tone and palette to it. So, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Anyways, again, a massive thank you to the creator, Bulba, for sending the system in. If you enjoyed this video, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video, guys. If you uh, also liked it, make sure to press that subscribe button. It helps on our journey to 40,000 subscribers as we're within 2,000 subscribers now. We're getting closer and closer by the day. Really appreciate all your support, but that will send on everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.